Introduction of a broken line graph. A broken line graph is a diagram that has a horizontal axis divided into units of time and a vertical axis that has displays the values of the qualitative characteristics studied and in which the data recorded are represented by points that are then connected to one another by the segments to form a broken line that illustrates the evolution of the phenomenon under consideration. History. The broken line graph, also known as line chart or line graph, has its roots in 17th century. It evolved from similar graphical representations used by mathematicians and scientists to depict data. The concept gained prominence with the work of Scottish engineer and political economist William Payne. In 1786, he published the commercial and political atlas, a work that contained a series of innovative graphs and charts. His innovative use of graphical representations helped in illustrating economic and statistical data more effectively. Over the time, the broken line graph became a widely adopted method for visualizing trends and relationships in various fields such as economics, science, and the social sciences. Now what is a broken line graph? In order to understand what a broken line graph is, let us define what a line graph is. So line graphs are graphs that present data values linked by a line. A broken line graph connects data points with line segments with different slopes. It is a line graph that connects data points with line segments. The lines do not have consistent slopes and can have positive and negative slopes. This type of line graph is used when it is necessary to show change over time. They display trends or patterns and help us make predictions. In a broken line graph, markers are used to represent amounts. These amounts are then joined together by straight lines. Markers can be dots, stars, or other representations. So a broken line graph also has a vertical and horizontal axis. For the horizontal axis, it is usually for the units of time, and for the vertical axis, it usually displays the values of the qualitative characteristics studied. And for the data, they are recorded or represented through markers, which can be in any form. Then, the data are then connected to one another by segments to form a broken line. We're going to explore the key terms associated with understanding a line graph. First is x-axis. The x-axis, also known as the horizontal axis, serves the baseline and a line graph. It typically represents the independent variables such as time, categories, or other quantitative data points. Second is y-axis. The y-axis, or vertical axis, stands perpendicular to the x-axis. It represents the dependent variable, indicating the values being measured or observed. Third is data points. Data points are individual markers plotted on the graph, representing specific values or observations. They form the basis for drawing the lines that depict trends or relationships. Fourth is lines. Lines connect the data points on the graph, illustrating the trend or pattern in the data over the range of the axis. Fifth is the axis labels. Our descriptions are names assigned to each axis, providing clarity on what is being measured or represented on the graph. Next is title. The title of the graph provides a concise summary of its content or purpose, helping viewers understand its context and significance. Next is legend. A legend, when present, helps identify different lines or categories represented on the graph, making it easier to interpret complex data sets. 
scale. The scale on each axis delineates the range of values being represented, enabling viewers to dodge the magnitude of the data points. Understanding this works equips you with the necessary tools to interpret and analyze mind maps effectively. I empower you to uncover insights and trends within the data. And now, I will be discussing to you the steps and procedure on how to make a broken line graph. But first, let me tell you the steps on how to make it. Number one, collect the data. Number two, choose access. Number three, determine the scale. Number four, okay, plot points. Number five, draw lines. Six, label data points. Seven, add titles. Six, and review, finalize. So as you can see here, guys, I already plotted the temperatures and then a month this is my data and and this is the access we have the y axis and the x axis since we already collected the data which is not step number one collect data and step number two choose access we have y axis and x axis and we already determined the scale and now let's proceed to step number four which is plot points so as you can see in the given data, we have January, which is 10 degrees Celsius. We need to plot it in its designated place, which is over here. January and then 10 Celsius. February, 12 Celsius. Since we're done plotting all the points, we are now proceeding to the step 5, which is draw, drawing the line. Since we're done labeling all the data points, we are now going to proceed to the step 8, which is go, we're going to add titles. So in the x-axis, we're going to name this as months. And the y-axis is temperature. And the whole graph is, I will be naming this as average monthly temperature variations okay since we're done adding some titles to the graph we are going to proceed to the last step which is review and finalizing we have to make sure if the given data is accurate to the graph and we have to make sure if the titles is accurate also to graph and that's all thank you example number one Kareel a third year nursing student was tasked with caring for a patient with severe fever she always checks and records her patient's temperature every hour to observe any changes or improvements recorded observations time 9 30 42 degree celsius 10 30 38 degree celsius 11 30 40 degree celsius 12.30, 43 degrees Celsius, 1.30, 38.5 degrees Celsius, 2.30, 37 degrees Celsius. What was the highest temperature of the patient? Number two, what time did the patient's condition become critical? Three, how many times did the patient's temperature rise? Four, from the highest temperature of the patient, how many degrees did it drop before returning back to the normal? Sample problem number two. The following data represents the monthly expenses of the patient in a hospital over a year. January, 9,000 pesos. February, 10,000 pesos. March, 17,000 pesos. 
April 14,000 pesos, May 19,000 pesos, June 26,000 pesos, July 18,000 pesos, August 21,000 pesos, September 22,000 pesos, October 13,000 pesos, November 18,000 pesos, and December 28,000 pesos. Questions. What is the highest expenses that the patient spent? Number two. What is the lowest expenses that the patient spent? Number three. What is the total expenses she spent for one year in the hospital? So at this point, I'm going to discuss to you the solutions and the interpretations and answers for sample problem number one. So in our broken line chart, in the horizontal line or the um, x-axis, we're going to put the time. So at the first line is, we're going to put at 9.30, then the next is 10.30, 11.30, 12.30, 1.30, and lastly is 2.30. And in the vertical axis or the y-axis, we're going to put the temperatures in an increasing manner. And next is we're going to mark the points based on the recorded observations that the problem gave. So on our first data, which is the 930, we're going to align it based on the y-axis. Since it says here 42 degrees Celsius, we're going to align it at exactly 42 degrees. The next is 1030, we're going to align it also at 38 degrees or mark it. Then at 11.30, we're going to align it at 40 degrees. And that in 12.30, we're going to align it at 40 degrees. And at 1.30, we're also going to align it at exactly 38.5 degrees. And lastly, the 2.30 is we're going to align it at 37 degrees. If you're done marking all the points, we're going to connect it with straight lines. So from 9.30, we're going to connect the dot to 10.30 and so on and so forth. So now that we are done connecting all the marks or dots on our graph, we have now come into our answers, which is the first question, what was the highest temperature of the patient? So as you can see on the graph, the highest point that reached was at 43 degrees so the answer to this first question is the patient reached 40 43 degrees celsius as its highest temperature next is what time did the patient's condition become critical since the highest temperature of the patient was 43 degrees celsius and its operating time is at 12 30 then the answer is the condition of the patient became critical at 12 30. The third question is, how many times did the patient's temperature rise? So, referring to our graph, the line elevates two times. So, the answer is that the patient's temperature rose two times. So, for the last question of the problem number one is, from the highest temperature of the patient, how many degrees did it drop before it turning back to normal? So, looking at our graph, the highest temperature was 43 degrees Celsius. So we're going to count how many degrees did it drop before returning back to normal. So our normal temperature is 37, which was the normal temperature of the patient. We're going to count how many degrees it passed. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the answer is the temperature dropped at nine degrees. That's all, thank you. So here's the solution and interpretation for the second sample of the broken line graph. So the first thing that we are going to do is to make a horizontal line for the x-axis and a vertical line for the y-axis. The next step that we are going to do is to put all the data in the x-axis. For the x-axis, we are going to put the month, which is the January. February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. And for the y-axis or the amounts or the expenses in the data. 
And the third step that we are going to do is to align all the data that are given here. As well as to plot all the points of each data. First is the January, we need to align it to 9,000 passes. Then for February, we need to align it to 10,000 passes. For March, we need to align it for 7,000 passes. Then for April, we need to align 14,000 passes. And for May, we are going to align 19,000 passes. For June, we need to align it for in 26,000 passes. July, in 18,000 passes. August, for 21,000 passes. September, for 22,000 passes. October is for 30,000 passes. November is for 18,000 passes. And for December, we are, we are going to align it in 28,000 passes. Then, we are going to draw a line to connect each point. Now, the next thing that we are going to do, or the last thing that we are going to do, is to answer the question or analyze the data that we have here. After analyzing all the data or reading or understanding the data, we are going to answer the question. First is, what is the highest expenses that the patient spent? So, we are going to look for the um, highest expenses and we have here the 28,000 during the month of December. The second question is, what is the lowest expenses that the patient spent? And we are going to look. The lowest expenses is 9,000 which is in January. So the third and last question is, what is the total expenses she spent for one year in the hospital? So we are going to add all the expenses that we have in this data or from the y-axis that we, are, we plot in the x-axis. So, the total is 221,000. So, that's the total expenses that she spent for a year. So, that's the second sample for broken line graph. For the summary, the Pythagorean theorem describes the relationship between the sides of a triangle. It can be used to find the missing side of a right triangle, which can be applied to solve many real-life problems. Understanding the Pythagorean theorem is the greatest foundation for learning trigonometry, the distance formula, and more.